Welcome to the channel, Lady B Investing. And I figured I'd make another video talking about this interesting tweet by uh, Vitalik Butrin and talking about a video that I made uh, last night and uploaded this morning. All right, so I was at the pool hanging out. Uh, noticed that this tweet came out when I went and grabbed my phone. I just started kind of looking through it. And it says, doing a random Twitter experiment, experiment just on this day. What a treat. Only 268 people I follow can reply to this tweet. He's using the only people that I can follow can uh, respond feature that they enabled on Twitter. More than likely for celebrities. Neat. Um, he says, feel free to ask me, ask things, and I'll talk about anything crypto or non-crypto related. Me personally, I'm very interested in the crypto portion. Don't really... Um, I'm not going to say I don't care, but I'm not really interested in him personally. And of course, Elon Musk asks him a completely irrelevant question that doesn't really have an answer just because that's the kind of person he is. That's funny. I like him. Um, this guy. What are some promising ideas for Ethereum and Doge cooperation? What was it about Doge that got you interested in the project? And got a substantial amount of attention, not as much as Elon, but I think this is probably one of the best questions that was asked. I don't see anything else. Let's see. Okay, there's some other stuff. So, but first, let's start on this one, the one that I'm really interested in. So, first off, do I hold Doge? Absolutely. I hold a bunch of Doge IOUs, unfortunately, because Robinhood, um, that's what they sold. They sold IOUs. We want our freaking coins. Give us our coins. Give us a wallet so we can take possession of our coins. This is, at this point, is criminal. You're holding people hostage. You're not a good actor. And this is directed towards Robin Hood. But anyway, Vitalik says, Personally, I hope that Doge can switch to POS soon, perhaps using Ethereum code. I also hope they don't cancel the $5 billion a year annual POW proof of work assurance. Instead, they put it in some kind of DAO that funds global public goods would fit well with the Do with Dogecoin's non-greedy, wholesome ethos. Um, I don't know. It's kind of weird. I mean, coming from a billionaire, those words, non-greedy, wholesome ethos. I don't know. I don't know. Not saying that this guy is a bad actor or he does things bad with his money. Um, it's his money. He made it. Cool story. But yeah, I don't know. Kind of weird. Maybe it's just my poor mind programming. But anyways. Proof of stake. Doge going to proof of stake. I mean, that's what well, that would be a dream. Followed by a nightmare if they were going to use the Ethereum code. Because I believe the complete opposite of what Doge community is, wants, and stands for. We want clean code with consensus where we won't fork every time there's a disagreement. We want transaction fees to be affordable. We don't want 100% gain on the token and a 400% gain on fees, which is what I experienced today, many of you experienced today. What good are the gains if the fees outweigh the gains what what do we do you lose it doesn't matter how high your coin goes if the fees are always higher you have to you have to find yourself hunting in the middle of the night to, to transact on the blockchain because the gas is too high in the daytime to even use you can't take advantage of price actions on different types of coins. I just think ERC-20 is a joke. But anyways, $5 billion a year POW assurance. I do not like proof of work. And I'm not, I don't really care about the whole, oh, uh, it's not green. Nah, that doesn't really interest me. I just don't, I just think it's just, it's not efficient, period. Proof of stake is the way to go. Use the, use code. Use an algorithm. Let the people build uh, scalability on your network. Don't use Ethereum code. Ethereum code has proven not to work very well. It forked by accident last week. 
Why would we want Doge to go through? Why would we want Doge to have any characteristics of Ethereum? My wish is to get as far away from Ethereum as humanly possible. Do I hold Ethereum? Yes, I do hold some Ethereum. Embarrassingly enough, you can hear me complaining about it all day. About it being pretty much stuck in my wallet and not wanting to move it because they want a substantial chunk of my holdings just to move it to a wallet, which makes no sense. And you want to wish that on people that are holding Doge and the majority of the people that are holding Doge are lower income folks. Why would you? I mean, like I said, I tweeted earlier, if the Italian mafia were to build a blockchain, it would be Ethereum. Highway robbery. Non-scalable. Not really community driven. Built on wealthy entities and wealthy individuals that can afford to buy equipment. Now, the coin in itself, I mean, it's, it's unaffordable for most people. Can I buy Ethereum? Yes, I can buy Ethereum. Have I bought it? Yes, I've bought it. Have I transacted on the network? Of course, I cry about it all the time. Breaks my heart every time I have to do a transaction with Ethereum. Main reason why NFTs cost as much as they do is because people are trying to escape the fees. You need to sell your NFT for $10,000 because your fees are going to be $4,000. It's just a game. It's a bad one. Hopefully, hopefully, Solana, Polkadot, Cardano can save us from this nonsense. ETH 2.0, it's going to fix it. No, EIP, you know, 1559 or whatever, whatever number it is, it's going to save us. Not the fees went up. Didn't do a damn thing. I'm sorry. Do I want Doge to go POS? Absolutely. Do I want it to use Ethereum's code? Hell no. Let's search for a new question. Uh, with blockchains having an increasing external dependency on centralized controlled assets, USDC, the fork as last resort governments becomes economically impossible. Is this good or bad? And is this tweet a fuzz testing for a simulation we or only you live in? The game theory is definitely looking less and less like peaceful succession and more like mutually assured destruction. I would say it's a good reason for layer one to ossify more over time and for more active governments to happen on layer two over time. Why not all of it on layer one? Anyways, uh, <laughs> let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Arguably EIP 1559 was a, was a really successful application for ideas for mechanism design. It was inspired by conversations I had at whatever that expo is. Let's hover it. Okay. Boom, in 2018, but of course that one looms large because it was so recent and it's a big one. It's not just justified, not just theory, but actually live. Yeah, whatever. I'm not impressed. Uh, let's see if there's any other good stuff around crypto because that's what we care about. <laughs> Who are these people? Okay. Oh. Discord going nuts. I don't think there's much of anything else left here. Can I get rid of that? There we go. Epic. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at my channel. I got four subscribers today. Manny B Investing. Drop the link. Of course, you'll know the link. You can just hit subscribe on the video. Hit the link. Hit the bell. Subscribe. All that. But I put up these two videos. These are my first two videos. Actually, I was, I really meant them to be meant for them to be one video, but it ended up just I did it on my phone, so it just ended ended up working out. I took a dive and jumped into crypto and actually started using the network. So I'm glad that I did it. I learned so much. I learned, I think I learned more in the last 
two weeks than I've learned probably all year dealing in crypto. Like dive in head first. Let's do this. And hey, for a channel that only had one subscriber, I thought I did pretty good. 30 views and then five views on the, on the second part. But today, man, really blew me out of the water. I didn't think I'd get more than 10 views on this video in a week's time. And I got 100 in a day. And I got like 50 within the first hour. And I, I don't know, man. I just, it just really inspired me to continue to make videos just based on the response that I got. So thank you for anybody who's gotten, gotten on the video and, and interacted with me. Like, a lot of people didn't like they thumbs down the video, but they actually talked with me, which was pretty cool. It's got four thumbs down and one thumbs up and that's fine. Um, you can just like the video. It doesn't really bother me at all, but I got a hundred views. I got 11 comments, man. Those comments mean everything to me. You're interacting with me. You're challenging my thoughts and ideas. I'm challenging your emotion. I'm challenging your belief system. And that's what I want. I want us all to think. I want us to. I want people that have different walks of life, different point of views, to come together and discuss those things together in a safe place. A safe place where we can talk and we can reason with each other. That's what I want. I don't. I don't want people to be in an echo chamber where just one idea, one way of doing things, and everything else is bad and evil. Don't want that. And that seems to be the direction that this world is headed in. And I'm telling you, it is, it is, it's going to be the end of us. It's going to be the end of all of us. If we continue down this path, we have a chance to correct that. Let's correct it. Let's check out AMP. Posted the video in the AMP uh, community on Reddit and the subreddit. Um, I was totally expecting to get wrecked. I got a lot of down votes, but we're still up at six. A lot of people just read the title and they were like, oh, he's blaming blaming amp for the the hack a lot of people really did kind of come with that and i challenged them i said hey watch the video if you have anything to say ask me i'm right here i'll respond we can discuss it we talked that's all i want i just want to talk i'm not saying anything bad about amp i like amp there's some things about amp that i don't like i don't like the ethereum portion of amp I don't like the business communication with the retail holders. I don't, I don't appreciate the way they're going about that. I'm not saying that it's wrong or bad. I just don't like it. And I'm noticing a lot of other people don't like it either. So hopefully, maybe we can come together, talk about the, the positives and the cons and the way that they're moving or not, or lack of movement through social media. And maybe we can, we can get some change, but yeah, people are kind of sick of the coin trading sideways. And it's like, well, you know, use case is, is the use case, but you know, we need partnerships. We need bigger partnerships. We're not going to be able to sustain an entire blockchain with people buying, you know, three, $4 cups of coffee. That's just not it. We're not going to sustain a blockchain. We're not going to sustain DeFi on this blockchain with people purchasing loafers from Marshalls and made to order food from a small town gas station. It's just not going to work. It's a great start. It's a, the technology on display is what brought me over here. What got me to buy tokens, but Ethereum is what caused me to sell them. Unfortunately, I want to get back in, but it doesn't make any sense to have a stake pool where staking your tokens costs more than the rewards that you'll get back for staking the tokens and removing them takes even more money. So you're looking at, depending on how many tokens you have, you can get wrecked for two years by just doing a single transaction on the network. Makes no sense. And simply saying that fact makes so many people upset and I'm so tired of these retail holders that don't use the network, don't stake. They're just buying the tokens because when Lambo attacking people 
and they don't know anything about cryptocurrency or how it works. You're literally just holding tokens. You're not playing in the arcade. You're going to the movie theater. You're going to the counter. You're buying tokens to play the games and you're standing on the sidelines with a bag full of tokens cursing at everybody that's using the machines and playing the games and using their coins. That's essentially what you're doing. And you don't think you look foolish doing that. Well, I'm here to tell you that you do. You look like a fool. When you're sitting here telling people that are using and playing, essentially playing the games at the arcade while you sit there on the sidelines, not playing any games, but holding the coins because you think the, the arcade is going to become so popular that you'll get rich by just holding those coins. And hey, has that happened in the past? Yes. Will it continue to happen in the future? Probably. But as DeFi begins to kind of shape itself and defines what it is and who it's for, those opportunities are going away. You're going to have to actually play in the, the, the arcade with the rest of us. Just holding tokens on the sideline is not going to get it. You have to actually do things like stake your tokens to make money. And when you go to do that and you get wrecked for all of your yearly yield, then you'll have a problem. And by then it'll be too late. We're telling you right now what's going on and you don't want to hear it because your fragile ego won't allow you to hear anything that you don't like. Well, we can't build, we can't build that way. This is all going to fall apart if we don't all come together and figure out what we want and what works best for the community. I'm talking about governance. Super important. Learn about it. I'm learning about it. And I'll report back once I'm knowledgeable enough or if I have questions on it. But um, yeah, thank you for any, everybody that liked the video, watched it, interacted with me, negative or positive. I welcome it. Thank you again for watching the channel. Hit that like, hit that share, subscribe, hit the bell. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.